A pleasant evening to you and YouTube land. We're delighted that you tuned in and that we have this opportunity this evening to study from God's holy word. If you take your Bible and turn to the book of Acts in the second chapter, you'll find that the book of Acts is a key chapter of scripture. Many of the things that were prophesied in the days of old point to that particular day. And many of the things written after that point back to that day. Now we recognize the importance of the crucifixion of Christ and the resurrection and the ascension. But in the book of Acts in the second chapter, you have the beginning of the church. And I would for just a few moments to stop and see some great things in Acts 2. Just some great things of that particular chapter that we can put down and remember. And as we recall them, we recall how wonderful the God is that we serve. And I'm sure that I will overlook many things in this study, but let's just notice a few. If you take your Bible in the book of Acts and the second chapter, if you will look at verse 1 and notice the day. In verse 1 it says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now the scripture tells us this was the day of Pentecost. And notice, if you will, from the book of Leviticus and the 23rd chapter, in verses 15 and 16, this would have been the first day of the week. This would have been a Sunday. This was a great day for all the Jews, as we read they came from every place to celebrate Pentecost. But I want you to think about some other great things that happened on the first day of the week. You'll recall in the book of Mark and the 16th chapter that Jesus was resurrected on the first day. The first day is important as we read this is the day that Jesus came out of the grave as is revealed in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In Mark 16, 9 it talks about him being raised by the power of God. So as I make my study I realize that every first day of the week is important. Now we are in particular looking at the first day of the week in Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost. But we need to remember that every first day of the week is important. And you need to look at in Acts 2 that the church had its beginning upon this first day of the week. It was here that the kingdom of God was proclaimed. What Jesus died to purchase and what Jesus died to build is now underway in the book of Acts and the second chapter. So we need to understand that it's important. Look in Acts 2 and verse 41. It said that those who gladly received his words were baptized, and there were about 3,000 souls added to them. Then if you drop down to verse 47, they were praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Jesus died to redeem man, we see that in Acts 20, 28. He died to purchase man, to redeem him from sin and bring him to salvation. So in the book of Acts, in the second chapter, we see individuals being redeemed when they were baptized into Christ. Ephesians 1, 7 tells us that redemption is in Christ and forgiveness of sins in his blood. So when I look in Acts 2, I see a great day. I see the day that the apostles were inspired by the Holy Spirit and taught the people the truth of God. And then I see that this was the day in Acts 20 and verse 7 that the Lord's Supper was kept. Not the day of Pentecost, but the first day of the week. I think we understand how important the first day of the week is as it is called the Lord's Day. And then we need to also bear in mind how important the day of Pentecost was because it was the beginning of the Lord's church. But the second thing I want to bring to your mind is not only was it a great day, but they occurred in a great place in Jerusalem. Notice they had all gathered together in Jerusalem on that day. This was the city that God had selected for the temple to be built and this was the day and place the Lord selected to establish his church. In Matthew 16, 18, he said, I will build my church. He will bring his people into salvation, transferring them out of the kingdom of darkness, Colossians 1, 13, into the kingdom of the dear son. But not only do I see a great day and a great place, I see a great crowd. We often hear people talk about the great 
crowds they had. But if you look in the book of Acts, in the second chapter, just think of the number they had. It said there were people from all over that had come to the city. And what a day to see people gathered together, concerned about the word. And notice, if you will, in Acts 2, that they were listening to the word. In Acts 2, 6, it says, And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. They were all amazed and marveled. Notice that they all came together and they heard the preaching of the gospel. And they had all come to the city of Jerusalem. And so when I think of that, I think there's a great crowd. We know 3,000 were baptized. We don't know how many people heard that day. But there's a fourth thing I think we need to bear in mind. They heard a great sermon. As we read this chapter, we hear one of the greatest sermons ever preached. It was so simple, they could all understand. And as we just pointed out, they heard it in their own language. That was a miraculous thing the Holy Spirit performed at that time. But notice the sermon was one that cut to the heart. It was direct to the point. Look in Acts chapter 2 and observe some things that Peter and the others said on that day. If you will, in Acts 2, look at what he said in verse 23. Him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken. Now you've done this by lawless hands. And you have crucified and put him to death. Now, God raised him up. You tried to kill him, but God raised him. And he says in verse 24. And then, if you will, down in verse 36, look at the statement, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, now watch it, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. I think that that was a direct sermon. It was to the point. He is the Christ and you killed him. But it declares he was approved of God. Looking back in verse 22, Men of Israel hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. So here we have the sermon. And notice they're preaching about Christ. And he says, you killed him. God approved of him and God raised him. And as you look in verse 24 and verse 31 and verse 32, it talks about he was raised by the power of God. And it's declared in verse 36, he is both Lord and Christ. When they preach the good news, they preach the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. They preach the fact that people were lost in sin. And they preach that through Christ's blood they can have forgiveness if they're baptized into Christ you'll find that there are as many great things preached on that occasion. But then there's a great question. When the Jews heard this great sermon, they asked a great question in verse 37. They said, what must we do? Their hearts were cut by the message. And they had open minds. They realized they had to do something in order to be saved. They desired salvation, and in plain and simple language, they just asked one question, what must we do? How do we get rid of this sin of crucifying the Christ? So when I think of that day in Acts 2, I think of a great day. I think of a great place in this city of Jerusalem. I think of the great crowd who was assembled there. I think of the great sermon proclaimed by Peter and the other apostles. And then I see the sermon hitting the heart of the people and a question being asked that was a great question. What must we do? But look in verse 38, you'll find a great answer given. It is a shame that so many belittle this answer because it was given to the great question. And when they said, what must we do? What does Peter say? Peter says, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Now, I think about that. Whatever you repented of, that's what you're baptized for. He said, you repent of your sins and you're baptized so your sins will be blotted out. It's easy to observe the remission of sins follows baptism. They were told to be baptized into water and raised up that through that act of faith and that obedience, God would remove the sin. 
So there you have a great answer to their question. But finally, I think it would be amiss if we didn't talk about the great results. You think about the great results that occurred on that day. In Acts 2, 41, 3,000 obeyed the gospel. Can you imagine 3,000 people being baptized? Can you imagine what it was like that day on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem as those people had come to Jesus, they repented of their sins, confessed Him as the Christ, and were buried with Him in baptism, raised as He was raised to walk in newness of life? And you go back to the book of Acts in the second chapter and you think about 3,000 were added that day. Then, if you will, look down a little bit further. And notice what they're going to do. They're going to continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They're going to continue in fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayers. They're going to keep the word of God. They continue to do as God had directed, as the Holy Spirit had directed through the apostles. So the apostles, as guided by the Holy Spirit, revealed the truth. And as they responded to the truth, there was great results. I think about the fact that truly there were some great things on that day. There are some great things that occur in the book of Acts and the second chapter. But you know, this could be a great day today. This could be a great evening tonight. If you've never obeyed Christ... Do you realize you could make it a great day by becoming a child of God? And Luke 15 said that angels will rejoice. Have you ever thought about one of the greatest things, the greatest thing we can do is to be reconciled to God and have our sins blotted out. The greatest decision is when I decide to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, surrender to His will, be immersed into His blood for the remission of sin and be added to the family of God, and continue in His doctrine. What a joy when one comes to Christ. Think about these great things from the book of Acts and the second chapter. I want to thank you for studying with me this evening.